Okay, so, boom, there we go. Okay, thanks for letting me know that the audio is not working because I can hear myself talking, but I can't hear what I sound like. <laughs> so we're gonna start this over. Sorry, it's late guys, I apologize about that. Technical difficulties. So, today, <laughs> What we're doing is we are going to be talking about different seasons. And with these different seasons that we have, we have four different seasons and all these different seasons make the year. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be talking about those seasons. And what I have is, this is, oh, it's upside down. This is Four Seasons Make a Year by Ann Rockwell. So we're gonna get started and I'm gonna double check. Yes. Audio is good. Okay, so here is Four Seasons Make a Year. A year has four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. March 21st is the first day of spring. Wind blows and birds sing. Dandelions pop up through melting snow to bloom in the dark, wet earth. Leaves sprout on the trees. It's time to plant the field. Spring showers come, the pear tree we planted by the porch is covered with white blossoms. A robin sings as it hunts for worms in the ground. It's time to plant corn and squash seeds in the field. I plant one sunflower seed by the back porch. Breezes blow blossoms from the pear tree into the sky. Birds sing as they build nests. Every day the air gets warmer, the earth gets warmer too. June 21st is the first day of summer. Green, spr green sprouts spring up from the field. My sunflower seed sprouts green leaves too. Soon all the trees are covered with leaves. Roses bloom, bees buzz, and butterflies flutter among the flowers. The pear tree's empty blossoms turn to tiny green pears. The flower bed in the front yard bursts with blooms. Sweet peas, lily, cosmos, and black-eyed seasons. The fields have stalks of corn, along with vines of green pumpkins and squash. On hot summer days, I swim in the pond down the road. Summer is when we pick the first ears of corn from the field. We sell corn, squash, and bouquets of summer flowers at our roadside stand. But I won't sell my big yellow and brown sunflower, which has grown much taller than I am. Look how tall that is. September 21st is the first day of fall. Our pumpkins turn from green to orange, and I ride to school on a big yellow bus. My sunflower drops in its huge blossoms, heavy with seeds. Leaves on the tree turn red and gold. Now I sleep under a blanket and wear a warm jacket to school. The bees and butterflies are gone. Many birds fly away too. We pick the big orange pumpkins that grow in the field. People drive out from the city to buy them at our roadside stand. Cold winter makes bright colored leaves dance through the air. Corn stalks standing in the field turn dry and brown. Pumpkins and squash vines shrivel up. It's time for the field to rest. Pears hanging from the pear tree are big and golden. I bite into one that's ripe, sweet, and juicy. Now the sky is gray and cold. All the trees but the evergreens have bare branches. Squirrels rush frantically here and there hiding acorns and nuts to eat when winter comes. Most of the birds have flown away. <laughs> On December 21st, the first day of winter comes. That very night, snow starts to fall and sit, and, I, and we sit by the fire that Papa built. We watch flames leap and glow and listen to, log cra listen to the logs crackle. Outside, the snowflakes fall thicker and faster. 
they're still whirling, twirling white in the black night, and it's time for me to go to sleep. In the morning, the radio announcer says, no school today. The roads are slippery, too covered with snow for the big yellow school bus to travel safely. A bright red cardinal hops onto the snowbank. Its mate comes to join it. I think they're waiting for me, for I know just what they want. These birds love sunflower seeds. The big dried up sunflower I planted and grew and saved is lying in a basket in the mudroom. I put on my snowsuit, scarf, and mittens and boots and go outside in our cold winter yard. Deep snow comes to my ankles and I toss sunflower seeds to the hungry cardinals. Chickadees come to eat them too. Under the blanket of snow, everything that grows in the earth is having a long winter rest, but I'm not. I'm building a bright white snowman. As I build, birds peck. Soon all the sunflower seeds are gone. When spring comes again, I'd better plant two sunflower seeds by our back door. So here, we have read through all of the seasons. Now, here, well, here in Phoenix, where the Arizona Science Center is, it doesn't quite snow during winter. It does snow up north, which is pretty cool. It gets really, really cold. But what's even cooler is right now, we are kind of in spring, summer. It's getting much warmer, and I don't know about you guys, but one thing that I love to do during summer is swim. I love going to water and just swimming and if I could I would swim all day long and just have pruny fingers and it would be great and I'd be living my best life but at the moment it's a little too cold to swim but what I can do is I can make a boat a boat can be something very small it can be super simple like this one I made but what's cool is it can also be really big and really complex, like the really big boats that you see out on the ocean or on lakes, or if someone has a giant pool. I don't know. But what I have here is a squishy. I found it randomly as I was cleaning out cupboards. But I'm going to make a boat for this thing. So what I have here, so this is actually pool noodle. And then I have toothpicks keeping it together. Then I actually used another toothpick in here to make a little sail. So that way, when it gets windy, the boat will actually move. And what's cool is the boat is just big enough to hold this. Now, this I made earlier. But what I also have here is I have popsicle sticks. I have more pieces of pool noodle. But what's really cool is I also have tin foil. So when you're making a boat, which I want you guys to try and make a boat too. When you make a boat, you just want to try and use materials that will float. So paper, mm, not the best. So you can try and make a boat. So what I'm going to try and do is let's see if I can make a boat using this tin foil. So I'm just going to cut a small little piece. Now, got to make sure it is big enough. Yep, it is big enough. So do you think I could just put this on the water and just have it float? Probably. But unicorn will get wet. So what you want to try and do is you want to just like crinkle up the sides and of course there's cooler ways to do this if you want to fold it you can always fold it but what I'm doing for time's sake I'm just going to roll up the different sides so that way ready for it it bum, 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 makes a little boat <laughs> a boat it has sides on it and no holes so, what I want you to try and do is I want you to make a boat. And I want you to see if this boat will float. That rhymed. I liked it. Now, if your boat floats, you are successful. If it doesn't float, ask yourself these questions. Why isn't it floating? Is it the materials? Or could I maybe try and change the design so that it can float better and hold up whatever object you want it to hold up? You have a bigger object, object, need to make a bigger boat. You have a smaller object, you want to make a smaller boat. Now, make these boats, see how it works. You can use any kind of water to test them. 
You can test them in a pool, you can test them in a sink, you can test them in a tub, you can test them in a bucket with water. Just go ahead and test them. And, of course, thanks for coming. My name's Erin. I'm with Arizona Science Center. If you want to see more cool, fun content, go ahead and hop on over to azscience.org. We'll have a bunch of other videos and a bunch of other activities that will keep you occupied. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody.